Hello learners, welcome to Zeta Access. I hope you are doing well. If you want to see this video in Hindi, please follow the link in the description. Today we will discuss one of the major theory related to earth science, which explains how continents are formed. In past, many theories were given to explain the process of formation of continents, oceans, mountains and other geological structures. Three of the most important theories among them are continental drift theory given in 1912, sea flow spreading theory given in 1961 and plate tectonic theory given in 1978. Today we will discuss continental drift theory. The name continental drift consists of two words, continental and drift. Continental means continent land masses, that is continents. It is all the region shown in pink color in the figure. And drift means slow movement. Thus, the name continental drift means that the continents are slowly moving. And that is exactly what the continental drift theory says. Continents have moved over geological time relative to each other. Origin of this theory can be traced as far as 1596 to Abraham Ortelius. Ortelius observed that eastern coastlines of South America and North America showed great similarity with western coastlines of Africa and Euro as if both were pieces of one single land block. Based on this observation, Ortelius suggested that American continents were torn away from Europe and Africa by earthquakes and floods. However, Ortelius did not give any concrete proof to support his hypothesis. Over time, many people gave similar ideas that continents are moving slowly, but none of them provided any strong evidence. All of this changed with the arrival of Alfred Wagner. Wagner, himself a climatologist interested in weather and climate studies. He did many expeditions to Greenland to study polar climate. And based on his observations, he gave continental drift theory in 1912, in which he provided a number of evidences to support his theory. Here, we can see a list of evidences of continental drift theory, and we will go through all of them one by one. It will take some time, but once you have seen the full video, I can promise you, you will never need to read this theory again. We will discuss the theory given by Wagner, then we will go through Wagner's continental drift theory, where he explains the mechanism of drift and the forces that cause continental drift. The first evidence is jigsaw fit of continents. We all have played with jigsaw puzzle where small pieces are combined to form large figures. Wagner thought that just like jigsaw puzzle, our continents are pieces of large land blocks and we can arrange the continents together to form a single large continuous supercontinent. He found great similarities in the boundaries of South America and Africa as well as North America and West Africa. His study was not restricted to American continents only, but he also studied similarity in coastlines of other regions. Similarities were found in coastlines of Madagascar and Western Africa, along with similarity in coastline of India and Madagascar. Similarities between coastal margins of other parts of the world was also found as you can see in this figure. This made Wagner think that these similarities in coastlines cannot be coincidence. But these continents sometime in the past must have been part of one large land block. The second evidence was similarity of fossils across continents. Wagner found a paper which talked of fossil distribution of four organisms. Let's discuss each one of them one by one. First fossil was of Cynognathus, a land reptile around 1 to 3 meter long which existed around 250 million years ago. Fossils of Cynognathus were found in South America and Africa. Now it was not possible for a small land reptile to cross vast Atlantic Ocean. Similarly, fossil of Lystrosaurus a dog-sized reptile from around 250 million years ago was found in Africa 
India and Antarctica. It was again not possible for Lystrosaurus to cross such vast Indian Ocean. Fossils of Mesosaurus, a freshwater reptile which lived around 250 million years ago, was found in southern part of South America and Africa. Fossil of Glossopteris, a sub which existed 250 million years ago, can be found from all continents in the southern hemisphere along with Africa, South America, India, Antarctica and Australia. If we consider all these organisms, their fossils were found in continents which were widely separated from each other. It was not possible for any of these organisms to cross vast oceans on their own and probability of similar species developing due to evolution on lands separated by vast distance is also very low. When Wagner arranged all the continents together, we can see that these regions where the fossils were found form a continuous region. Thus again, it was an evidence that these continents must have existed together as one continuous landform when these creatures were alive. Next evidence is coal seams found in Antarctica. Now before discussing why coal seams found in Antarctica act as evidence of continental drift, let's discuss how coal seams are formed. For formation of coal seams, we need large vegetation, where the vegetation gets buried under sand due to flood or landslides or any other process. Over millions of years, this layer gets buried under other layers and the buried vegetation is subjected to heat and pressure. Due to extensive heat and pressure, the buried vegetation over millions of years get converted to coal. This layer of earth, which is large amount of coal, is called coal seam. So we have seen that for formation of coal seam, we need large amount of vegetation. But when we look at Antarctica, we see there is no vegetation. Due to its location, it is not possible for Antarctica to have large vegetation even in the past. But for formation of coal, we require deposition of large-scale vegetation. Therefore, Antarctica in the past must have been located away from poles, somewhere closer to equator, where it could support large vegetation. Thus, Antarctica must have moved from there to the current position near poles. Next evidence is presence of illite deposits across continents. Illites are glacier deposits, that is, sediments deposited by glaciers. Glaciers which flow over mountains, they cause erosion of underlying land masses. These eroded rocks are carried by the glaciers and deposited at the end of glaciers. These deposits are called illite deposits or glacier deposit. The glaciers within themselves carry large amount of rocks. Now if the glacier melts, all these rocks are deposited and over years other layers are formed over these layers. But if we can dig through these layers, we can find presence of tillite deposits which act as an evidence of glaciation occurred in that region. Such deposits were found across South America, Africa, India, Australia and Antarctica. The tillite deposits found across all the continents belong to Carboniferous period and so thick layer of deposition. We could infer three things from these deposits. First of all, because of the tillite deposits, we can say that these regions had glaciation. All deposits were of Carboniferous period, which meant that all the regions had undergone glaciation at the same time. Thick layer of deposits indicate that these regions underwent glaciation for a very long period. So it was not like a very short period of glaciation, but the glaciation occurred over centuries. However, when we look at the location of India and Africa, they are very close to equator. And it is not possible for these regions to undergo glaciation. Therefore, all these regions during the Carboniferous period must have situated closer to the southern pole in southern hemisphere where all these regions experienced glaciation together. Next evidence used by Wagner is geological similarity across continents. When we look at the continents, we feel 
that all these continents are made of one single type of rock. But when we look at the geological division of these continents, we can see that each continent is made of different types of rocks. Even this can be further divided and there can be many types of rocks of which first single continent is made. Now one of these rock types is called cratons and these are oldest rocks found on earth. They can be as much as 3 to 4 billion years old. In this image we can see distribution of cratons across the continents. When study of these old rocks was done it was found that some blocks of rocks across continents showed lots of similarities. The green line show rocks across continents with similar characteristics. We can see that these cratons, which are distributed across continents, seem to have come from one single block. They have the same characteristics and they seem to be origin from same time duration. Therefore, this acts as an evidence that they were formed from one single block. Next evidence is similarity of mountains across Atlantic Ocean. Mountains on both sides of Atlantic show great similarities in their origin, structure of rocks, time period. These mountains include Appalachian Mountains of US, the Eastern Greenland Mountain, parts of Atlas Mountain, Western European Mountains and Scandian Mountains. All these mountains were created through two orographic process where orography means mountain building process. First one was Caledonian orography which occurred from around 550 to 400 million years ago and the second was Hercian orography which lasted from 400 to around 300 million years ago. Therefore, these mountain ranges are called Caledonian and Hercian mountains. The similarity in these mountains indicates that all these mountains were formed together as one single block. Therefore, North America, Greenland, Europe and Africa must have been located side by side when these mountains were formed. The next evidence suggested by Wagner was pole wandering theory. This is one of the important evidences used for continental drift theory. To understand pole wandering theory, we need to understand a process of rock formation. When magma comes from deeper parts of earth, it is very hot. Moreover, the deeper parts of earth is mainly formed of magnetically active elements like iron and nickel. So the magma when comes from the deeper parts of earth, it is rich in magnetically active elements like iron and nickel. When temperature of the magma is above Curie temperature, the magnetic elements in magma are randomly oriented. That is, the magnetic elements point in random directions. But as this magma starts to cool down and temperature of the magma comes below Curie temperature, the magnetic elements in the magma align themselves to the magnetic field in the region. In other words, the magnetic elements will point towards the magnetic pole. Now when the magma further cools down and solidifies to form rocks, the magnetic elements are locked in their position in the solidified rock. That is, the magnetic elements will continue to hold their position and cannot change directions of orientation. Even if the north pole moves, the magnetic elements within rocks will continue to point in the direction when they were formed. Similarly, if the land block is moved due to tectonic activities, still the magnetic elements in the rocks will keep their orientation. These elements in the rocks can be used to locate position of magnetic north pole when the rock was formed. When study was done on rocks from same continent, that is, one sample of rock was taken from current time, it pointed towards current magnetic pole. But when a rock sample 100 million years ago was taken, it pointed to different location of magnetic north pole. Similarly, when 200 million years old rock sample was taken, it again pointed in different direction. Thus, it seemed that the magnetic poles have wandered over time. Since magnetic elements of rocks from different time period indicates towards different location of magnetic north pole, this leads to three possibilities. The first one, 
only pole has moved. The second, only continents have moved. And the third, that both have moved. Things got interesting when rock samples from other continents were studied. When rocks of current time period was taken from different continents, that is North America and Africa, the magnetic elements of rocks from both continents pointed towards current magnetic field or current magnetic pole. However, when the rocks of same time period in past belonging to different continents were studied, they showed different locations of magnetic North Pole. In the figure, we can see that 100 million years old rock sample from North America showed different location of magnetic North Pole compared to the rock of same time period from Africa. Similarly, 200 million year rock, old rock sample from different continents showed different location of magnetic North Pole. Now if only poles have moved, then rocks from different continents of same time period should have pointed in same direction. But this was not the case. Rocks of same time period from different continents showed different locations of magnetic poles. Therefore, we can rule out the possibility that only poles could have moved. From the remaining two possibilities, we can see that the continents must have moved. Now, just for your information, current magnetic North Pole is located in Canada. Next evidence is gold placer deposits of Ghana. Now, let's first try to understand what is placer deposits. If you look at the diagram, we can see an area where there is intrusion of gold rocks. When this area undergoes erosion, it could be water, air, river or any form of erosion, then along with surrounding rocks, gold rocks will also get eroded. The eroded material is deposited in some far location. These depositions will also have some gold rock sediments. This kind of deposition is called placer deposits and it requires erosion of a gold rock source. When we see the world map, Ghana is located here and it has a large amount of gold placer deposits. It had so much placer deposits that it was called Gold Coast. But we do not find any gold rocks or gold veins in the area. However, there are large number of gold rocks in Brazil. It feels that the gold deposits of Ghana are derived from Brazil gold rocks when both these continents were together. The last evidence is age of Atlantic Ocean. Study of the ocean rocks and ocean floors suggest that the Atlantic Ocean did not exist before Jurassic era, that is 200 million years ago. So if there was no Atlantic Ocean before 200 million years ago, then American continent must be beside African continent. Now we have seen the whole list of evidences given by Wagner. But just giving evidences was not sufficient. Wagner had to provide a theory, a mechanism of how this happened and which forces caused this continental drift. Wagner tried to explain the process of continental drift and forces causing it in his theory Continental Drift published in 1912. Wagner suggested that around 200 million years ago, all the continents were one single continuous land block. This land block was called Pangaea. The ocean that surrounded Pangaea was called Panthalassa. Around 200 million years ago, Pangaea started to break and it got divided into two parts. The northern part was called Laurasia, which included Asia, Europe and North America, while the southern part was called Gondwana land, which included South America, Africa, India, Australia and Antarctica. Laurasia and Gondwana land further broke down to form continents as we know today. Wagner also defined how continents move over oceans. When Wagner gave this theory, it was well known that the continents are made of Cr, which is silicon and aluminium, and ocean flows are made of Sima, that is silicon and magnesium. Using this information, Wagner said that since continents are made of Cr and oceanic flows are made of Sima, the Sima is heavier than Cr, therefore oceanic flow is heavier than continental landmass. Now, since the continents are light in weight, they can float over oceanic flows. Wagner defined that the continents cut through the ocean flow in the same way as icebreaker ships plows through sea ice. 
In the figure, we can see that an icebreaker sip moving over the frozen ice sheet. As the ship moves forward, it breaks the ice sheet and leaves a trail of broken ice behind it. In a similar manner, when the continents move over oceanic flow, they cause some deformations in the oceanic flow. At that time, there was no method to analyze the oceanic sea flow to verify whether there are certain deformations caused by the continental landmass moving over it. Now, Wagner also defined that when Pangaea broke down, the broken parts moved in specific direction. We can see in this figure here that India, Africa and Australia moved northwards, while Eurasia moved southwards. Wagner defined that these parts moved towards equator. However, if we see South and North American continents, they seem to have moved towards Western direction. So Wagner said that these continents moved in westward directions. In this, we can, in this image, we can see the comparison of two maps, that is, at the time of Pangaea and the current continental locations. And we can see that how each continent has moved. Wagner further tried to relate continental rift to mountain building process. He said that since the American continents move westwards, we see long chain of mountains, namely Rockies in the North America and Andes in South America in the western margin of these continents. Similarly, since India and Africa moved northwards, we see Himalayas and Atlas on northern borders of these continents, while Eurasia moved southwards, therefore we see long chain of mountains on southern margin of Eurasia, which include Alps, Alberts and others. Wagner also tried to define different forces responsible for continental drift. He mainly mentioned two forces that were responsible for continental drift. The first was pole fling force, also called as centrifugal force and tidal force. Now, centrifugal force is generated by any rotating body. It is a force which acts in a direction away from the axis of rotation. Since our Earth rotates on an axis, it creates centrifugal force. This centrifugal force is directly proportional to the radius of rotation. In other words, more the distance from the axis of rotation, more will be the centrifugal force. Therefore, we can see that the centrifugal force is maximum at equator because radius is maximum, while at poles, the centrifugal force is zero, since the radius is zero. If we take centrifugal force at any location, we can see that the direction of centrifugal force is perpendicular to the axis of rotation of Earth. Therefore, centrifugal force can be broken down into a horizontal component parallel to surface of Earth at that location and a vertical component perpendicular to the surface at that location. The vertical component of the centrifugal force is balanced by gravity and they cancel each other out. However, the horizontal component is not balanced by any force. Thus, any object at this location feels a centrifugal force directed towards equator. Wagner suggested that this horizontal component of centrifugal force is responsible for movement of continents towards equator. Now, since this force is directed away from poles in both hemisphere, Wagner called it pole fleeing force. The other force suggested by Wagner was tidal force. We know that Earth revolves around the Sun and Moon rotates around Earth. During these movements, some parts of Earth face Moon or Sun experience more gravitational force, while parts of Earth facing away from Moon or Sun experience less gravitational force. If we just see the Moon and Earth system, we can see the parts of oceans facing Moon experience a force of attraction which cause the water level in ocean to rise, causing tides. These forces are called tidal forces. Now, Wagner felt that just as ocean waters move due to attraction of moon and sun, in similar manner, continents must also move due to tidal forces. Even though Wagner gave a number of evidences to support his theory, but the continental drift theory of Wagner was rejected due to flaws in his calculations. Wagner was a climatologist and not a geologist, due to which he lagged the accuracy in calculation and his calculated values 
were unrealistic. The horizontal component of centrifugal force when calculated by other geologists was found to be too small to cause movement of continents. Moreover, the tidal forces when calculated by other geologists were also found too weak to cause any movement in continents. In fact, if the force calculated by Wagner was true, then that would cause stopping of the rotation of Earth. Wagner also failed to explain what happened before Pangaea, how mountains were formed before Pangaea formation. Argument was further made that if the continents really moved, their margins would be severely distorted, not only not allowing any comparison of coastlines. Even though continental drift theory was rejected, there were many geologists after Wagner who were inspired by this idea and worked to prove his theory. It was this theory which challenged the contemporary theories and opened doors to a radically new idea, an idea which laid the foundation of sea flow spreading theory and plate tectonics theory. Now, since there are a large number of evidences, we will see a quick method of memorizing the list of evidences. Here, we can see the list of evidences we have used. Now, we will highlight the important words in each evidence. I can left out the jigs of it because I think that it is very easy to remember and you can easily recall it during your exam. So we will now rearrange these highlighted words. We will take the initials of each of these highlighted words. And using these initials, we can form a sentence. The sentence 3G for PC and mobile. Where the initials of each word has been taken to form this word and we can see that 3G means 3Gs, glacier, geological and gold, while F means fossils. P stands for pole, C stands for coal, A for Atlantic and F M for ma mo mountains. Thanks for watching the video and I hope you liked the video. If you have liked the video then please like, subscribe and share with your friends.